Hi everyone, and I'm back today with another video, today focusing on the issue of DE pedagogy. So the focus of this video is asking what are some general foundations for a pedagogy or teaching techniques that we should keep in mind as we're teaching in the DE format. So first off, I would say take advantage of all the pedago pedagogical possibilities within Canvas. Canvas is an amazing LMS or learning management system that allows you to do anything you want. I think you know the sky's the limit. You need to choose, pick and choose the resources that you want to use and the tools and apps that you want to use. But Canvas is just such an open world of possibility in terms of your teaching. So take advantage of all those possibilities. Don't begin with the impression, as some people do, that your teaching in a DE format is limited because of its modality, the fact that it's taught in DE. I hear this a lot. I think it's lessening. I don't hear this as much. But like when I first started teaching DE in 2005, I would hear people say, well, you can't do quality uh, pedagogy or instruction in DE. And I would argue with that. I would love for you to have a conversation with me on campus. I'm just here um, across the hall in B101A and talk to you about how DE can be such a meaningful meaningful opportunity for our students and our instructors. I've taught since 2005 on DE and I love the opportunities that's given me to improve my craft as a teacher, as an instructor of anthropology and sociology, and I've seen many students' lives change for the better because of the fact that they had the flexibility to take DE and also, I hate to say it, but it's true, because of it being DE. There's something about certain aspects of DE pedagogy and instruction that you can't replicate, replicate in a face-to-face -face class. And we often don't talk about that because we begin with this false assumption that there's a limitation because we're teaching in DE. I really want to argue against that. And again, I'd love to talk to you in my office about why I think it's not the case. One of those reasons is years ago, I did this in, um, right as I started in teaching DE format, 2005, 2006, Six. I was in a project through the At One Scholars Program, and this was uh, a series of 15 scholars we met via email and also down, I believe we went to Monterey, it was really nice, and we had conversations um, about our special projects. My special project was called An Analysis of Student Success in Reflexive Online Classroom Assignments. And I specifically wanted to deal with this last question I just asked you, or suggested, or impression, that because I do reflexive assignments, which are person-based assignments where the students express their own personality, because I've done that in the face-to-face -face class, will I be able to do that in the DE format? And the answer, you, you can read my, uh, on my uh, LinkedIn site or academia.edu, but basically my conclusion was yes. And these were some samples I included of how students expressed their own personalities and connected those personalities to key concepts in the class, in this case, the sociological imagination from Sociology 101. So I would love to talk to you about some of these opportunities out there because don't assume that you can't do some of the things that you do in your face-to-face -face class. Canvas allows you to do so many things that you would be really surprised. I say at all times, focus on the value of instructor presence in your online class. It's something we are stressing as our board and superintendent president in 2019 have stated a clear commitment to the improvement of the quality of DE instruction here at the college. Secondly, we started a grant in 2019 through the CBC OEI project of a half a million dollars that's also focused on this same issue. One of the hurdles I see in online education is the fact that people often don't insert enough of their instructor presence in an online class. And I just really think we need to think about this because it's something that we note as a potential hurdle in some of our classes. So we're really going to focus on that. Emphasize as well to your students and to yourself, I think, that, that the class is not a correspondence or self-paced course. You have deadlines, you have assignment due dates, and train your students, teach your students to be responsible and that they have to be as serious and academically focused on deadlines as they would in a face-to-face -face class like B103, whatever class that is, as they would in a DE class. Very important to stress that. Another thing is think very carefully about translating certain content, lesson directions, or modes of delivery from the face-to-face -face world of teaching into the DE world of instruction. So for me, the transition wasn't that hard because yes, I have props occasionally. If it's a physical anthro class, there might be skulls or hominid casts that we work with. But if it's a class about ideas like sociology, as long as I have access to text, to video, to links, to websites, I'm pretty good. Some of you, on the other hand, if you're teaching in a laboratory se setting, this might not even be possible. And not all our lab classes have transitioned to DE, and maybe they shouldn't. I'm not saying they should. But think about how that translation process will or will not work for you, and then meet with us to really think about some of the tools available on Canvas to make that translation a little easier. 
Here's an example. Actually, I mentioned hominid casts. So this is a website I used to use when I taught physical anthro online. And it's not the same as touching and 3D rotating them. But when you go through the site called Becoming Human, you can actually do some interactive documentaries. You can actually look at casts of skulls moving in three dimensions. You can kind of do this. It's almost like that those are real estate tours you can do or hotel tours when you're thinking of staying somewhere where you can look at the room from all these different virtual angles. And that's kind of what this is geared at. So you'd be surprised to see how much of this is becoming possible just via virtual and even augmented reality. I think in the near future, we're gonna see Google Glasses and some of those opportunities as we roll out maybe even more immersive forms of DE instruction here in the online format. So this is really key with a DE class. Because you're not meeting face-to-face, -face, you really do need to address student discipline and behavior earlier rather than later in your course. If you let it fester, if you let it simmer, it could really explode at a point in your class. If you see any issues, um, nip those in the bud, talk to those students, emphasize your discipline policies in the class, your behavior issue policies relative to the student catalog here at LTCC and so forth. I have some other videos out there that specifically address student behavior, so be sure to check those out. They're much more detailed. Don't make assumptions, particularly in course navigation and directions, that because something is clear to you, that'll be clear to your students. We really want to emphasize in your DE approaches here at the college that you think about not your perspective of getting through something, an assignment, a navigation pattern on a web page, but you think about it from the student's perspective, specifically how they envision something and how they might struggle with something. So think about it from their perspective. Use that feature in the Canvas app called Student View. Click on that. The screen turns purple, and then you, then you can kind of see if everything is laid out in such a way that it'll be meaningful for the students as they work through your materials. Definitely network with other instructors on campus, virtually or physically, to get some ideas as how to best deliver instruction in the DE modality. Some of us have been doing this for a very long time, and we have sensibilities about what makes for a good assignment versus a bad assignment in a DE format, regardless of the discipline that we might be teaching in. So reach out to all of us and take advantage of some of those networks. In terms of my own experience, I've done a lot of work in pedagogical theory. For example, I edited the book Strategies in Teaching Anthropology. And one of the things we do in these guides and trainings that we used to offer at the uh, national meetings of the American Anthropological Association is that we talk about distance education and how to do some effective pedagogy, regardless of what discipline that you're teaching in. As long as you're teaching in DE, what can we do to improve? And so um, come talk to me if you're curious about any of those techniques. As I say, engage in professional development activities specifically related to teaching in the DE format. Teaching conferences are great, but if you want to hone in your skills in your discipline through the DE modality that we're talking about here, then specifically focus on a conference out there. It could be a virtual webinar that gets you into all the conversations and networks and discussions about how to be a successful DE instructor, not just an instructor in general. So as I always say, good luck in your journey. We hope it's a successful journey as you move through the college here, as you become a really high caliber DE instructor. And as always, don't be a stranger. Reach out to me, Trevor Thomas, and others on campus, and certainly all those in your department to take advantage of all the expertise that we have in terms of suggesting some strategies for you to be a successful DE instructor. <laughs>